the, uh, the federal authorities with their arms uh, drawn, their guns. And then also all throughout the hours leading up to this, we saw these snipers up here on uh, the roof there trying to survey the crowd and make sure everybody that came in was checked. And uh, that's what we see when we go to all these events, especially when the Secret Service is involved. They check as many people as they can. People Let me just re relay to you what I saw when I was at the rally at the People's Convention in Detroit. Because uh, I was back at the media den, uh, standing around where the camera was, that uh, where the CNN camera. Um, when Trump was referencing that there were uh, that the CNN camera light had gone off, and he pointed to the back of the room, I can tell you, I was standing next to a Secret Service agent. And there were two others that were walking or working the corridor uh, in between where the crowd stopped. And there were bleachers to the back of the stadium in Detroit and to where I, uh, I was standing with about 30 other media people. And these Secret Service guys, they move and they act immediately when anything out of the ordinary happens and moves. So uh, the the Fox News correspondent is talking about the snipers, uh, the uh, apparently the uh, the, C the Secret Service snipers, springing into action and uh, surveying the crowd. There were probably agents there that were surveying the crowd as well. Again, Mike Church here uh, live on the Crusade Radio Network, reporting all that I can right now here for you uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania, at 6:16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it, it sounded to me like it was a pair of shots. There were two or three shots rang out, and uh, President Trump grabbed his right ear. It, it, I'm, I'm almost in tears because this looks like what happened to President Kennedy. When Kennedy was shot through the throat, the first bullet went through his throat, and he went to grab his throat, and that's when the second bullet then hit him in the head. And pray to God that that's not what happened here. We don't know. We have no idea. Uh, Fox News does have a reporter on the scene. The Secret Service is clearing, is clearing the crowd now. Let's go back to the Fox News feed here live at 6.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We rack what happened here when President Biden, or excuse me, President Trump had taken to the stage and was speaking. This is what happened. Okay, I heard two shots after he's on the ground. Oh, my God. If you're listening on the radio, a pair of Secret Service agents on the stage now. Guns drawn, looking at the crowd. Shooters down. Are we good to move? Clear. We're clear. Clear. We're clear. Let me get my shoes. I got you, sir. I got you. Let me get my shoes, sir. Hold on, your head is bloody. So we gotta move to okay, he's, they have him standing up now. He's standing up. Watch out. Okay, they, so they have him standing up here in this shot. He's That's a fist bump to the crowd. He's waving to the crowd. The Secret Service agents are carrying him off. He's bleeding from just above his right ear. And so uh, just to show you what, uh, what happened just moments ago in Pennsylvania. So they carried him off. They did not put him in an ambulance. They put him in, in the beast or his current version of the beast. They put him in the beast. And uh, there was a uh, one of the agents slammed a, a, a hand slap on the door as in, to, in as in you're good. And again, it happens very quickly. It's hard to tell exactly what's happening. There is a moment where okay, so he is facing uh, the direction when uh, when the incident occurs. He is facing, if you're looking at the podium, he is facing to his right. And when the first shot goes uh, rings out, he grabs his right ear or the right side of his head. 
moments as they um, and again i am relaying to you uh, there, courtesy of fox alexis news the fox news feed he took any kind of actual physical injury if it was the shock of it if it was more the forcing him to the ground for his own protection but he clearly was uh fully cognizant and aware and speaking and raising his fist to the cheers of folks as he left I want to check back in with you yeah, so I think one of the things to point out is that people heard pops. That's, you know, we were saying. I heard, Maggie, how many pops did you hear? I heard four pops. But it sounded like, you know. The first, uh, after the first pop is when he grabbed his head. And then the second pop. Setzer, I'm going to have you kind of show here. Okay, so I think now, uh, just to relay, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep Fox playing in the background if we get any details on this. I think now, just to relay. But going back to exactly what we heard, so it was like that series of pops, and then something also important to point out was that smoke. Uh, so in terms of what kind of, uh, you know, possible weapon or explosive was used, we're still trying to figure it out. The former president did either, you know, probably fall to the ground, was pushed to the ground pretty quickly when they all popped up there, uh, the Secret Service, and tried to jump in and protect him. We saw people swarm. I mean, this place is full of law enforcement, right? You know, Shannon, from going to these large events like this. Um, they mm -hmm. check every single person when they come in. They check your bag. They check everything. They want people down. So they were just trying to figure out exactly who was in the crowd, if it was coming from that crowd here, where you can see where it's uh, After the uh, shots rang out, or after uh, Trump appeared to be hit in the head, or was stunned, I can't tell. It, it, it looked to me like he, like he was stunned that almost like a, you know, you, you, you hear a, a, a very loud horse fly or some other insect buzz into your ear and you look around like, where the hell did that come from? Um, and then there were two or three uh, 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 shots after that. And as soon as, it, as soon as the first one grazes him, he reaches with his right hand to his right ear. His MAGA hat comes off and then he's on the way to the ground. Now, is that because he has rehearsed this? And again, you're hearing the Fox News feed in the in the background. Is because he has rehearsed this with the Secret Service that if it ever does happen, hit the ground. Because it appeared to me that it was under his own power that he hit the ground, not that he collapsed. Um, the, the agents rush in and they are surrounding him. And then uh, you can hear there there is a conversation going on. Is he good to go? Can we get him up? Can we get him up? Is he good to go? And then uh, after about 30 seconds or so, he is helped to his feet. When he's helped to his feet, he thrusts his right hand into the sky. He gives a thumbs up as they surround him so that he can't be shot again. Uh, bear in mind, and I just want to point this out because there was some chatter uh, about Secret Service agents here recently. Those men surrounded him so that if there are any more shots, they're going to take the bullet. Top is that we should remember that in any incident like this, of the first temple. This is the voice of Paul Morrow, former NYPD inspector. Um, and obviously wait for the facts to come in. It does look like he stood up. He was okay. To he pumped his that, fist. You know, he raised his arms. He seemed like he was strong. Um, does look like a graze wound to his ear or around his head. We don't know, um, you know, if he had any injuries below that, but, you know, he seemed to be fairly uh, spry. So, you know, there is that. In terms of securing a situation like this, look, it's hopeful at best. You're going to want people uh, when they come in, you know, if there are not metal detectors, which are slow and cumbersome and sometimes. OK, uh, 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 I'm going to tell you now, I've seen this uh, clip now three times. Uh, Trump clearly when he is brought to his feet, I won't repeat the words, but basically says F them, F them, as in he has survived a, a, an apparent assassination attempt. Let me go live now to my colleague and Second Amendment expert, uh, the armed Catholic Richard Barrett, who is on the Dude Maker Hotline here. Richard, uh, I'm stunned, absolutely stunned. Um, what do you, uh, did you see this? Do uh, you have anything to add? What can you tell us? Uh, first of all, Mike, we continue our streak uh, of events that are catastrophic, and you and I are joining that. Secondly, um, yeah, I just got a message from somebody saying, "What do you think about this? What do you think about Trump being shot at?" And I was like, uh, "And I'm going. I'm, I'm sitting here watching House. What are you talking about? Trump's being shot at." And I watch him one so, leap. <laughs> yeah. So I go on to X, which is the only platform to go on, and I see video after video after video of the Secret Service surrounding Trump. Trump standing up. First of all, it sounds like a 22. 
the, the pop. It doesn't sound like anything heavier than that, which is why Trump got shot in the neck and didn't drop. Because uh, you can see he slaps the back of his neck at the very beginning, almost like a mosquito bite. Okay. Uh, and then, That's what uh, I it said. It was almost of, like a, a, a bug came in hot and you go to swat at it because you hear it in your ear. You hear it buzz in yeah. your ear. So, even, and uh, secondly, you called this a while back. I know you said at some point this is a, this was, some kind of assassination attempt will happen at, at Trump because of the constant vitriol that is being spit his way and the constant fear mongering. You can only call Trump a dictator so long, and you can only say that his, his return will end democracy and everybody will be in camps and all this other stuff until something happens. Looks like he was shot in the cheek. There's there's slowing video. Oh no, he was. Uh, there's blood. I'm I'm watching chat. the replay now on Fox, Richard. It, there is blood, blood coming from his right ear. There's blood in his yep. right ear. And as he is, as the Secret Service agents are helping him off the stage, he does pump his fist and go f them, f them. Um, you can clearly, <laughs> if you're a lip reader, a lip reader, you can clearly see that. Um, uh, 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 I'll tell you something else that I that I gleaned from this, and I just wanted to point this out again. Those men that work for the Secret Service, they are draped over him. If any bullets come flying in, and they're like trying to push his head down, like, keep your head down, Mr. President. Head down, head down. But, of course, he's Trump, and he's like, yep. no, no, I got it. <laughs> um, uh, but they are all over him, heroically ready to receive bullets on behalf of the president. Yep. And um, it's... I don't know how desperate they are to get Trump back into office because stuff like this only adds 10 points to his lead. It doesn't matter who they – they could liter, they could swap in Big Mike at this point. But when you have a presidential candidate being shot at, that's, it doesn't matter who you run against him. That, that literally shows that somebody is afraid that the deep states or whatever the case may be. You know, you, you just had a Teddy Roosevelt moment mm -hmm. where, you know, Roosevelt gets shot and continues his speech – they literally had to drag Trump off of the stage, as you just said. And you know, the, the legend of Teflon Don, legitimately in this case, continues to grow. And, and Richard, if you go to Twitter, uh, just one of the people that has a, a video up quickly, I want to thank Nick Sortor. Nick Sortor has that video up really quick from uh, Right Side Broadcasting or from In Wokeness. And you can see blood from the right ear. Mm. You can see Trump p uh, p uh, pump his fist and go, F them. F them or F it, F it. And you can see the Secret Service agents, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five. And they, they're like making a, 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 Richard, you're an old rugby player. They're making a scrum around him. They're, they're getting trying, the ball right now. Yeah, they're, he's they're trying the, to get the ball. He's the ball. He, he's inside the scrum. And they're trying to get him off the stage. Again, uh, Richard Barrett, host of the uh, Barrett Brief here, uh, weekend edition here on the Crusade Radio Network, which just aired. Six hours ago? You've just wrapped up five and a half hours ago. And here yep. Richard and I are on another unplanned late afternoon. <laughs> this is the third time now covering a live event that we don't want to be covering and I don't want to have to be talking about. But I can tell you this, he does exit the stage. The Okay, it's the female Secret Service agent. He he must have told her, get my MAGA hat. She has the MAGA <laughs> hat in the hand. She And she's like, I had the hat. And they are on him. Just watching the replay now again, and they get him into it. It's interesting that they that they get him into into uh, uh, I guess one of the versions of the beast. And yep. and before be they get him right into behind that stage. Yeah, yep. and bef and before they get him into the beast, he puts his foot on the entry floorboard, pushes himself up under his own power to get in. His head is exposed again, and he pumps the yep. fist in the air again. And drops the F word, and then they push him, they grab him, and they push him uh, into the uh, in, in, into the vehicle here. Now, I'm curious as to why you say that's a 22 that you that you think that you heard. Um, it, it's very hard to get shot. It, it, the 22s they have that louder bang, like pop, pop. Okay. Yeah, and so that's just my first the first inclination I get. When I hear that, nines are a little heavy, you know, because of the weight of the bullet. The twenty two is, is is a very light bullet, so it's going to sound very light. Heavier bullets, it just sounds heavier. I could absolutely 
be wrong, but it looks like there's two shots, one in his cheek and one one somewhere around his ear. And if uh, if it was anything heavier than that, I think you would be looking at much more much more substantial damage to him, unless they were using full metal jacket. Even full metal jacket around the back of the head would have gone clean through, and I don't think Trump would be pumping his fist at that. So that's just my off-the-cuff, not very scientific reasoning for why I think it's a 22. Uh, of course, it could just be the fact that the guy had bad bad shooting, and it just grazed him, depending on where the... It looks like he was shooting at him from the, the what would be the right side of the stage. We have, a, um, we have an eyewitness uh, from Fox News right now. Let's listen in. All right, Protecting the on. president and doing the best that they could, just springing into action like the selfless people that they are. Did you see blood on his ear? Above his ear. Above his ear. It did not look like he was bleeding from his ear. And did everybody in the front row, we were just all started praying for him. And you took cover. I mean, everybody up here, too, no, kind of got down. Did you, you didn't get down at all? Did, then when did you see move in pretty quickly? Did you see the police move in? Yes, yes. And I guess they're trying to. Okay. It looks like we have lost Alexis there. So, Britt, Brit, I want to bring you back, and then we're going to check in with Lucas as well, who's trying to... And they probably cut the feed there. Uh, so he he concurs with you, Richard, that the blood was coming from above his ear. Yeah, so I'm trying... Because it because I'm, I'm literally trying to scroll over right now, and the first shot, or the first time he does it, like you said, he's smacking the back of his neck around his ear, which has got to be the result of something hitting, and then he drops just out of instinct. So if it was any kind of a heavier bullet, it, he wouldn't have been able to smack it away, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, so that's that's why I would think it's probably a 22, something light of that nature. Uh, so that's, it's a, it's a, it, this is, this is third world country. This stuff, is banana right? Republic stuff here though. Um, but but look, it, 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 as you said, Teflon Don, President Donald John Trump. Again, folks, reiterating here, it's Mike Church here with Richard Barrett. We are live here on the Crusade Radio Network. So, something I did not want to do today. I was watching Quantum Leap, <laughs> that re reruns of Quantum Leap. Richard was watching. What were you watching? I was on uh, House. I was watching he, House. He right was now. watching House. And my dear friend Julie Kopka called me and said, Mike, we were watching the Trump rally. He's been shot. So I went, what? And she goes, go to the TV, go to the TV, go to the TV. So I ran in here, went to the TV, and we came on immediately uh, live as fast as we could. And just to reiterate, uh, by my time, it was 6.16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when the shot rang out. Here's a replay of it. Be temporary. And while it may be true for a while that the... That the, uh, oh, this the is Brit Hume. Meanness. Okay, Richard, I've seen this now th uh, uh, about five times. He is facing to his right. Okay, so he has his usual podium, both hands on the podium. He's propping himself up on the podium like he usually does. He's facing, uh, if, if you're looking at him, he is to your left. He's looking to your left, but to his right. And mm -hmm. he, uh, in, in the middle of the sentence, something hits him. He reaches up above his ear as in like, what the hell was that? And then uh, there must have been a second one that hit him somewhere because it's then that he, he that he drops. And to me, this yep. is so eerily similar to what happened to President Kennedy. Because President Kennedy, the first bullet, which came from below the, the coach of the Lincoln, uh, from the tunnel below, hit him in the throat, right? Went all the way through, and he reaches, and President Kennedy goes to grab his throat, thinking like, you know, like a, like some giant bee has stung him in his throat, like, what the heck? And when he puts his head down, that's when the second bullet uh, enters into his, he, he is shot again from uh, from below, and the, and the exit wound is from the back. It was just too eerily similar for me. I don't know about you folks, to just to repeat, uh, President Trump has apparently been shot at a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania at 6.16 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Secret Service was all over this. I can't say enough again about the about the heroism of the Secret Service. Those guys get a bad rap. Uh, they were all over him, and they were trying to push his head down. You know, if you watch the replay mm -hmm. video, they're, trying, they're, they're telling him, like, dude, get your head down. Stop. One of them, a pair of them, even have their hands up like in his face area, like so. If there is another shot coming, it's going to hit them in the hands. 
And uh, Trump uh, uh, pumps his fist into the air a couple of times, says, F them, F them. The crowd erupts in cheers uh, that he has uh, apparently has not been killed. Here are some still footage. If you're watching this on YouTube that you can see, um, these are some still shots now coming in just moments ago now taken from the, the from the crowd. Now, Maggie, look at that one. He has blood strewn across his face. It's across his mouth. It's across his face. So the, the, uh, the, the bullet or the projectile, whatever it was, obviously hit him above the right ear. Um, I can't tell if that is a wound on the cheek or not. President immediately... And just we're check back in with the with the Fox News feed. I'm just mm -hmm. eavesdropping to see if they have anything That's new in their care. Um, Lucas, please let us know. We we will circle back to you if we get any further reaction there from uh, Delaware or from within uh, the Biden uh, White House or campaign as they are learning uh, probably more than we know at this moment, but certainly in real time. I think former D.C. homicide detective Ted Williams is with us. Ted, are you there? I am. I'm here. Ted, I want to get your reaction uh, as a man who has uh, worked in law enforcement. You know what it is like. Uh, you have a better sense than we do probably of everything that goes into covering protective uh, people uh, who are in uh, the, the care of law enforcement at every level, uh, primarily federal, when they go out and do this as a former president. Um, your thoughts on what we've seen this afternoon? Well, you know, Shannon, this is one of the worst nightmares of law enforcement, specifically the Secret Service, who are charged with uh, protecting the uh, presidents and the former presidents of the United States. Uh, when you've got a large crowd like you have here with that uh, former President Trump was speaking before, uh, you have all kinds of law enforcement, Shannon, around. You have state, local, and you have federal, and you have specifically the Secret Service. Now, if, if you see the various pictures of President Trump here on the stage and how the Secret Service moved in right away to get him off the stage, uh, you can see about his face that there appear to be some blood. So there may very well be some injury, and uh, we're just going to have to wait to learn more. But this is something that uh, law enforcement plan for, but no matter how much you plan for something like this, you never can get it 100% right if there's someone hell-bent on injury. Okay, uh, uh, live here on the Crusade Radio Network again with my uh, my colleague Richard, uh, Richard Barrett. Uh, now that you and I have seen this replay, I know you're watching it on Twitter again, um, you could, I think, Richard, safely say that whoever shot at him shot at him uh, it was waiting for him to turn to that angle uh because it looks to me but you're the ballistics guy it looks to me like the bullet was intended for the skull and either hit him right above his right eye above his ear and grazed off and uh it would create what we would say as a flesh wound um, or it just grazed the top of his right ear. And, but it, in, in, in any event, um, that wasn't the only shot. So you being the marksman out there, um, is, 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 was it, is, it, is it in your review of what you've seen, is it the first bullet that got him, or is it the second one that got him? I would have to say um, I'd have to listen to it again. Uh, because the first shot's going to be the shot. They, uh, some people call it a cold shot. Some people will say it's probably going to be the shot that you're going to have the most time to. It, another reason why I think it's a 22, 22 is a relatively small, uh, easy to conceal compared to nines and, and 380s and things of that nature. Um, but if he, if this person is standing in the crowd and, you know, they can take the time Bring the bring their trigger finger on the trigger, bring it to the wall, take a deep breath, and take the shot. And then after that first one goes, then their adrenaline probably starts kicking in, and that's when you just hear the pop, 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 pop in, uh, in in rapid succession, because you know that wall is broken, that seal is broken, so those shots are just they're just coming out. Um, so I think the first shot's probably the cleanest shot they were going to have, right? And then the rest of them, uh, it also. 
uh, this is an obvious caveat, folks. I, I'm not trying to wipe this off, but this is also going to depend on how much experience, training, and and ability this person has to shoot. Um, but the the first, my opinion, the first shot is probably going to be the best shot because that's the one they're going to take their time, take the breath, pull that trigger to the wall, which is where you would stop on a trigger if you ever fired one, and then just pull that through. Uh, and then after that, just pop, 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 pop. Now, so uh, I think it was the first shot that got him. Let me just add to this, and uh, our colleague Mike Parrott is on our uh, other Dude Maker hotline. We're going to bring Mike in in just a second. Mike here, hang on just a second. Um, I, I just want to uh, just throw this out there. The Secret Service did not go to the crowd and tackle anyone. Not that I saw or not that I've heard. So it seems to me then that whoever this were, whoever the shooter was or where he was, it doesn't seem to me as though he was in the crowd. There were two witnesses that we've already heard on Fox News. You know, Richard, the guy that wears the, the suit, the brick suit around, the guy that look, 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 it yep. looks like the suit's made out of bricks. He was brick in the wall. front row. Yeah, the wall, wall the brick wall, brick wall man. Brick wall man was in the front row. He said he heard four bullets, four shots. And he said that he didn't see the he didn't see anyone that was nearby that uh, that, that that was taken to the ground or anything of the sort. Let me bring uh, Mike Parrott in here. Uh, so before, while you're doing that, Mike, I don't mean to interrupt, but just take this with a grain of salt. News is coming fast and furiously, folks. People, multiple people are injured in the crowd right now. Possibly one fatally. We don't have that confirmed yet, but multiple people have been reported as injured in the crowd. A tragedy unfolding. Y'all say Hail Mary prayers right now. And play to the Blessed Virgin Mary for her intercession for all of these people. Uh, Mike Parrott, are you there, uh, sir? Yeah, I'm here, and I think uh, I think Barrett's uh, assessment uh, ballistically is correct. I think it was the first shot that hit Trump, and after that, uh, it was just kind of spraying wildly into the crowd. And my number one question was definitely going to be, there's no way someone else didn't get hit. So I'm not surprised that there are, there are bystanders. Uh, uh, so there would be anyone who was behind him and to his right then would be in the, uh, in the, in the line of fire here. Uh, I can't, Mike Merritt, uh, you're just joining us. Richard and I have been at this for about 10 minutes now. Um, this is not something I wanted to be doing on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, no, I mean, look, um, I am reminded immediately, my mind went, and I've got Alberto here in the truck with me as well, the most hated man on Catholic Twitter. Uh, I am reminded immediately of the Tucker Carlson interview with Donald Trump where Tucker says, hey, Trump, they lied about you, they made up the hoax, they impeached you twice, don't they just have to kill you next? And he kind of shrugs and says, yeah, I guess they do. And and it's because you don't know you don't want anyone to tell you that you're going to be assassinated, <laughs> and you don't want to think that it's possible that it could come true. And we don't know the extent of this. Uh, uh, we have no information whatsoever about uh, 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 about who, why, what. No information whatsoever. Um, it does seem to me, however, though. If you are familiar with the, uh, and uh, I'll keep Mike on the line here. I don't know, Mike, if you, do you remember the, in the summer of 2017 or 2018, my friend and my congressman, Steve Scalise, was almost killed by Bernie Sanders supporting Nutcase, who had driven his, um, his work van to the site of where the, uh, uh, the Republicans, the congressional Republicans, were having their practice for the annual uh, Democrats versus Republicans baseball game. And that guy was not a very good marksman, thank the Lord. Sprayed the field. Maybe Richard can get, shed some light on what ballistics were used. Um, uh, shot and injured. He, he hit, I want to say, three members of Congress. But the most seriously injured was Representative Scalise, my friend, who I was a young Republican back with in the 1990s, and who is my current member of Congress. Um, uh, and a bullet went into his uh, into his uh, his right side, his right abdomen, exited the left side, tore his spleen open, ripped uh, through a part of his intestines. He almost died of sepsis a couple of times. It's a miracle that he survived. Um, but that was uh, that that guy sprayed those bullets, Richard, if I remember, from uh, 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 quite a distance here. Mike, do you remember the, the, that attempt on the congressional Republicans? 
Yeah, I mean, and then Scalise made a made a remarkable recovery in that he made himself into into congressional leadership. I mean, uh, he's he's a warrior just like Donald Trump is a warrior. He heard you heard Trump say stop, stop to the Secret Service. He had to, he had to get his uh, he had to get his moment. You know, he knew he wasn't going to die, uh, and he and he and he had to stand up like a man and show the world that he's not scared. There's a, of the fascist people or dictators, supposed dictators of the 20th century, Garcia Moreno, for example, that were killed for their devotion to their people, and in Moreno's case, his devotion to the to the faith. You know, Moreno didn't have a chance to defend himself, basically. Um, uh, so, so we don't know what would happen to Moreno. Um, this seems like this is like this is something that happens in. In foreign countries, it happens in Ecuador, it happens in, in Spain, it happens in Portugal. Uh, it doesn't happen Mexico. in the United States. It happens in Mexico, right, does it? Yeah, there was 22. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike. No, I was just going to say just about the Secret Service guys, because uh, I, I know some of those Secret Service guys. Uh, there's, a, there's a big pipeline from the Marine Corps into the Secret Service. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty well-traveled career path, shall we say. It is their nightmare to have a president shot when they're standing right next to him. It is the thing that keeps them up at night. And one of the things that Alberto, who's here in the truck, he was like, how did this happen? The Secret Service is insane. Uh, you you just went through it, King Dude. You went through the Secret Service. Sure did. Uh, at the turn of the USA, USA thing. You know how thorough they are. There's no freaking way someone's getting a gun into that thing. So the first question is, how the hell did this happen? Well, let me just. I would have to jump in. Let me real quick. I, I just look. I, a, I don't think he's in the crowd. I think you're going to have to. I mean, he's going to be outside probably with a rifle. I agree. Uh, there's probably a, a, a nest or something. That's not me. That's Joe Beeman talking to me right now. Uh, and secondly, uh, real quick on the Steve Scalise thing, he was shot with an SKS nine, uh, semi automatic and a 9 mil, which is why the damage was much more uh, terrible to him. All right. Back to you guys. Well, uh, Richard, I just want to stay with you for just a moment here. And, and how far of a distance is a twenty-two good for? Uh, it depends on if, if you know what you're doing. You can adjust for windage, height, all these kinds of things. Any bullet's going to lose velocity the farther it goes. Now, a twenty-two is not going to be great uh, for extremely long distances, but you don't have to be that far outside of the rally. Uh, you just have to, you know, where the perimeter of the Secret Service is, and then just kind of get outside of that. Um, um, let me just jump in here. Let me just jump in quick, uh, quickly, folks. Uh, Mike Church here with Richard Barrett, Mike Parrott, here on the Crusade Radio Network. We are live. It is 5.53 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 6.53 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, Trump campaign statement just put out. President Trump thanks law enforcement and first responders for their quick action during this heinous act. He is fine and is being checked out at a local medical facility. More details will follow. Uh, this follows with a secret Secret Service press release and the Secret Service is reporting that the president is safe. Their words, quote, the president is safe or the former president is safe. So they have gotten him uh, obviously away from uh, this uh, this this scene and this scenario here. I don't have a vantage point or a view of how large this crowd was in Butler, Pennsylvania or where it was, or where the, you know, where the venue was. Was it at a ball field? You know, he does them at airports sometimes. Um, so I, don't, I, I can't give you a, a, a visual on this, but to Mike Parrott's point, yes, Mike, I was in Detroit. The room, we went in Saturday morning. We were told, get here an hour early. Secret Service is doing security, not the DPD. So, as instructed, me and Bob Kaka and Bug Hall got there an hour early, and we all had to go through uh, a super security. They tied us up for an hour. We were an hour late getting in because they were sweeping the hall the, with the dogs. And then finally, when we were able to go through security, 
uh, uh, it was uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Detroit Police Department in cooperation with Secret Service agents, and we were instructed to, uh, this is uh, as bad of a TSA as you ever go through. You had to take your shoes off, but empty your pockets. You had to go through a super sensitive metal detector. Anything other outside of a belt or anything to set that metal detector off, you had to take it out. Uh, I, I stupidly had my utility knife in my pocket and throw it. The guy's like, dude, you're not coming in with that. <laughs> Bro. So I went through all that. But let me tell you, to Mike Parrott's point, let me just tell you, we all get into the hall. We all go through Secret Service. There's 450 some of a, uh, 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 some out of us on what they called Media Row, including about, I don't know, 30 or 40 Turning Point USA guys and about 150, 200 volunteers. We are then all a, a, a horn of sorts is sounded. Secret Service agents begin at the back of the hall, which is about six. 600 yards long and begin in a line making their way towards the front. By the time they get the rest, they're like, y'all got to get out. Everyone has to get out now. Out. They are taking, you know, you're, you're at a convention, so your table has like a, 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 a tablecloth, a bunting around it. They are going just methodically in a line like they're searching for someone. And as they get to our table and as they tell us we got to get out, they throw the tablecloths up and over to make sure there's nothing under the tablecloths. We are all told to get it, to exit. We are taken to a part of the hall that is about, you know, I don't know, 50, 100 feet from where the um, they kind of direct everyone to go into the hall. And we have to wait there for about an hour and a half while they sweep that hall again. That's how thorough, Mike Parrott, the Secret Service was. And then they let all of us back in. So, so Bug and I were in a line for about two hours. Yeah. And, um, and again, and, and I think Richard is right. It, it was it, the, from the echo of the shot, if you were to time the echo of the shot to the realization on Trump's face that he had been hit, that round traveled about as far as that round was supposed to travel, if that makes sense. So I don't think it's someone who, who even got inside. This was, a, this was a sharpshooter, a sniper of some kind, or an attempted sniper, and, and, and that makes the shot even more um, impressive, frankly, because if you're shooting from a quarter to a half mile away, and you and you miss the dead center of your target, which is the which is his face, which is what they were trying to hit, you know, uh, right into his skull, the, the the base of his skull. Only missed it by two and a half inches. You could say this country was two and a half inches from civil war, and still may be headed that way. Statement of the day, there, brother. Two and a half inches from civil war. Richard Barrett, you're you're, you're uh, our ballistics guy and our gun expert here. Is a twenty-two from that round? Even if it makes a square on impact, capable of penetrating a human skull, um, it could. Uh, no, twenty uh, twos are notorious for bouncing off. Um, they're not really powerful, which is why uh, I'm going back and forth with Joe Beeman right now, who's uh, uh, letting me know things about the seventeen HMR round. It's a di it's a little bit of a different round. Um, it's got better velocity. It can go about twenty six hundred feet per second. Uh, it's got a little bit better um, distance on that, and and so we're looking at something in that. It's still a light round. We're still looking at a light round here, just a little bit stronger. Um, 22s have been known to either penetrate and bounce around or bounce off completely because of the fact that there's not a lot of power. There's not because the power in your shot comes from the powder. There's not a lot of powder in the 22 or any of these small caliber weapons, so they're not. I mean, the, the best you're going to hope for is something like that. Um, so, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on a 22. 17 HMR would, would probably be a better choice. It makes that same lighter pop, pop, pop that a lot of us have agreed on. Uh, not, I don't have a lot of experience with the 17 HMR, which is why I'm kind of relying on Joe here to, to let me know that. But it's definitely a lighter round. And the lighter the round you go, Mike, I know this much, the lighter the round, the more likely something, it's not going to penetrate, it's going to lose steam, you're going to have a misfire. There's a lot more things that can go wrong with it. Well, l let me uh, ask then the question, of, uh, let me go back to Mike Parrott in Alberto here on the Crusade Radio Network. Well, then this suggests that this is an amateur, doesn't it? Because a professional would have used the proper caliber to take him out, wouldn't they? 
Let's uh, let's talk reality here, right? If you're trying to kill him, you're not going to fire from 300 yards with a with what amounts to a pea shooter, are you? I mean, and and well, let me throw another scenario at you, not to be like Mister Mister Conspiracy or anything like that, but if you know you're for sure not going to kill him, but maybe put him into the White House. I don't know. Just saying. Yeah, I. Uh, how long is it going to take for the? Uh, uh, how long is it going to take for the other media to come up with this with this scenario? Because they're going to bring ballistic guys in too, Mike and Richard, and they're going to say what I just said, and they're going to bring them in and they're going to say what I just said. Yes, Maggie. Well, I was just going to say though, how long has the mainstream media been talk calling him Hitler, Nazi, extremist? They've done this for years and years and years, ginning up the left. For violence, for an act like happened today. Yeah, I uh, as Mar here. Let me just read you some tweets here, Mike, uh, Alberto, and Richard. As we are covering this all live in real time, Marjorie Taylor Greene just moments ago. Someone just tried to assassinate President Trump. As I should say, Congressman Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene. The Democrats and the media are to blame for every drop of blood spilled today. For years and years, Maggie, as you just said, they've demonized him and his supporters. Today, someone finally tried to take out the leader of our America first and the uh, the greatest president of all time. Watch the pres the video. Of president Trump said, "Fight, so we will." I thought he was saying f words. Richard, did you, uh, I saw f bombs, f them, f them, f them. Is that what you saw? That's the press cleaning that up because there's no way anybody. <laughs> There's no way. If I'm getting shot at, I'm not going to say go fight win. And you guys have been around me when I've stubbed my toe. I'm uh, and pretty much. If somebody hits me with a with a, with, with a 22, I'm going to have to go to confession after I recover from the hospital because everything is coming out of the mouth at that point. Every single thing is being unloaded. So, so, to speak. Uh, uh, so just to wrap up the or to kind of uh, okay, Elon Musk. 2.2 uh, million people have already seen Elon Musk just posted a photograph on, this is real Elon Musk now, of Trump's fist pumped into the air, the American flag weighing in the background. This may be the timeline photograph of the year here. Officially announced he's endorsing Trump. Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, and Musk has just come out. Uh, wh when was this? Just now. Minutes ago, Elon Musk has endorsed President Trump for president. Mike Parrott, this is going to be the time life photograph of the year. I know you and Alberto are driving and you can't see it. Or maybe Alberto has pulled it up because he is the most hated man on Twitter. And if he goes to his home feed, just fuck, just go to Musk's feed and you'll see the photograph. As a matter of fact, Maggie, uh, if you click on my screen... If you uh, can show the uh, people on YouTube my screen, this is, I will full screen this so you can see it. This is the photograph that I am referring to here. This is a female Secret Service agent who has uh, President Trump. She's trying to get him off the stage. His, his right hand is pumped in the air. He has two streaks of blood, Mike Parrott, Richard Barrett, and Alberto across uh, one just below his nose, uh, across the top of the bridge of uh, 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 of his upper lip. The second streak of blood goes just below the uh, the mouth. As a matter of fact, Richard, if you can see this, that suggests to me I'm not Dexter from the TV show, but and I'm not a blood splatter an analyst. But that suggests to me two shots. Or it, when he was down. Or, 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 or was it when he was down, uh, it, it, it pressed against him. In any event, uh, um, Musk has posted his photographs. This is probably the timeline photograph of the year here to, to, to see this in... in uh, that, go that ahead. First, uh, that first one looks too deep. That's a graze. I think actually, I think both, because if you look at it, the first one coincides with the ear. So it looks like the ear and then downward, which would also go with the reports of people being injured in the front row. Uh, and then the second one looks like a graze as well. Those look deep enough not to be like blood trails. That actually looks like, that actually looks like, you know, scraping across the skin. This is all obviously, you know, off the cuff analysis on that. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is reporting or repeating what we reported earlier, which people at the rally have been shot as well. So say you have your Hail Marys for the people at the rally, possibly one fatally. 
Uh, we don't have any details on that. Again, uh, we are reporting on all these events in real time, live, as they are occurring here on the Crusade Radio Network. Um, uh, it, much will be revealed in the coming hours, I'm sure, and we'll learn much. But let's, let's just eavesdrop on the Fox News feed and see if they have anything new. People on the ground are saying, I, I'm fairly familiar with, with firearms. At least that's what it sounds like. But until somebody definitively from the Secret Service or local law enforcement says that, you don't know. You also have local law enforcement. Local law Jason enforcement Chaffetz. is going to be there. You're going to have tactical teams. You're going to have SWAT teams. You're going to potentially have National Guardsmen there uh, that are there to support the effort. When you have such a large, massive crowd, you have law enforcement of all sorts that is there. So, you know, the initial reaction from the Secret Service looks to be pretty it, it, amazing to jump in front. And, and cover up the president, get him into that motorcade, and get him to one of, there are going to be multiple different hospitals or, or uh, extraction points for the president. Um, and, you know, the Secret Service, that's, that's what they're doing. That's what they're paid to do. But it's more than that. They've got to have guts to get it done. And when the, when the president stood up and pumped his hand, blood coming from his ear and his fist, um, the guy's a fighter. You, you can say a lot about Donald Trump, but he is a fighter. And just jumping in on this, uh, Jason Elon, Elon Musk saying the last time, uh, just echoing you, Richard, last time America had a candidate this tough was Theodore Roosevelt. So, yeah. so, so uh, what, do, do you know what Roosevelt was shot at with? I don't no. know the history of that one. <laughs> that's, that's a that's a good question, but uh, uh, I don't uh, I don't know exactly what he was shot with. But um, yeah, no. <laughs> Good I question. Am, I'd have to look into that. I am scrolling through Twitter, as I'm sure everyone else is, and of course we, uh, we we are praying for the people in the crowd now. Just to reiterate here on the Crusade Radio Network, when uh, news breaks out, we break in, as always. And again, Richard Barrett and I together on another afternoon, we didn't want to be together, uh, together uh, not, not to cover this event, um, uh, at, at 5, uh, 50, uh, what was the time again? 5... 56, no, no, 516, I think, or, or 536 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, there were at least three, maybe four shots that rang out at a Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. President Trump was struck at least once just above or at the top of his right ear ear. He fell to the stage. Uh, the Secret Service descended on the stage where well, they're already there and surrounded him so that he couldn't be shot at again. He was taken off and put into the uh, Secret Service mobile or the beast or, or, or the, uh, the former president version of a Secret Service mobile. Uh, as soon as he was able to stand, he asked uh, that his MAGA hat be picked up. The female Secret Service agent picked the hat up. He, he pumped his fist into the air. Not characterized it that way, so we'll be cautioning our information. And I, I'm just uh, checking in to see if they're uh, replaying uh, the particular uh, video feed from the instance uh, that it happened. Um, uh, President Trump was put into the uh, in, into the car. Now, again, I can only go on what I can see on the video here. It appears to me, Mike Parrott, have you actually been able to watch this video? Yeah, I've seen it. So, and, uh, and and this is just coming in now. Audio reveals the Secret Service saying shooters down before they got Trump off the stage. So that that seems to to me to indicate that they they uh, they got the shooter already. Oh, shooter spectator is down. The spectator index is also reporting that the yeah. person who shot Trump is dead. So the shooter. So they uh, no, now are they reporting that that he was in the crowd? We haven't gotten that far yet, um, because right now everybody's being told to leave. Secret Service is told is core the crime scene, so they're just they're getting everybody out. Uh, Secret Service is moving towards away from the White House. That's not us, um, but yeah, it's just um, they're 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 saying he's dead. Uh, we don't know where in the crowd it was, if it was even in the crowd. 
Okay, so uh, we don't have any information on that. Um, uh, there is a guy, Saruba Sharma, who is reporting that a body was just carried out. And I can see Pennsylvania, uh, Mike and Richard, I can see Pennsylvania state troopers yep. carrying some, what looks to be a body out. This looks to me that that body is, it, it looks like they're on the stage. He was behind Trump. So, looks like they're behind him. So, so if he was behind the stage, uh, uh, Mike Parrott, then this is a Sirhan Sirhan moment because Sirhan Sirhan did not shoot Robert F. Kennedy Jr. A CIA, a, a CIA operative shot him from behind, and as the autopsy has revealed, uh, RFK uh, Sr. was shot from behind. Sirhan Sirhan was standing in front of him. It looks to me like whoever's being carried off is being carried off from what looks to me either to be in a bleacher that was facing the stage. Maggie, is that what I'm looking at? Or he's behind the stage because there is there is a bleacher that is behind the stage. I'm thinking that he was there for the rally. He doesn't appear because he wasn't handcuffed or anything like that. Granted, he's probably dead, but still, they take all kinds of precautions. I, I don't. I think that was a spectator. Okay, so then we just uh, so then it, it, we we don't know, but the Pennsylvania State Troopers and there was uh, five or six of them did carry a body of some sort off of uh, the stage here. Again, folks, we are reporting all this live. We're doing the best that we can trying to bring you uh, whatever information is out there and is available. And again, I keep checking back in with the Fox News feed. I'll do so again. 2015, when he showed up in Alabama in August of that year, and that massive turnout was there, you, you knew there was something behind this movement. And you knew it was something that drew a thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of people starting at that rally in 2015 and going through now in the summer of 2024. Chris, what are your concerns when you see tens of thousands of people who have gathered in open fields and understanding the challenge of keeping an event like that safe? Not just once, but time after time after time. Yeah, Bill, as good as the Secret Service are at what they do, and they are all about planning, reacting, you know, they're good at reacting, but they, they don't want to be in a situation where someone has close enough access to, to do harm to our president. So, you know, that's, that's their primary job. And they will tell you they've never fired their gun. In, in Mike Parrott, you're the only one that's on this phone call right now that's ever been actually in the line of fire and has actually had other men trying to kill you shooting at you. Uh, tell us w w what's going on in the minds of these Secret Service agent guys. Yeah, I mean, uh, j just just what they were about to say on Fox News is absolutely right. You consider it a good day if you do not have to discharge your firearm, period, end of story. There is no glory in, in having to pull your weapon. One thing we know about Secret Service, too, as well, and this distinguishes them from other law enforcement, they do not keep their weapons on safe. Because if they have to draw their weapon, they are firing their weapon, period. There is, a, a, you know, other law enforcement, like, you know, you know typical uh, police departments, even FBI, they keep their weapons on safe. There's an extra precaution before they actually can discharge a round. Secret Service is not like that. The weapons are ready, to, uh, are condition one at all times ready to go. Um, this, is their, this is their number one fear. And look, Secret Service gets assigned to all kinds of people. It's the president, his family, his children, his cousins, sometimes the, the siblings, the brothers, the all kinds of things. Right. The best of the best, the best of the best are a 